Now it's my pleasure to introduce Diane Rosenberg. Diane is the president and executive director of JFAM. She has an extensive professional background in writing, publications, event promotion, and community organizing. Diane also is an Iowa consultant to the Socially Responsible Agriculture Project and is an organizational leader in the Iowa Alliance for Responsible Agriculture. All of these activities complement her work with JFAM. So please welcome Diane Rosenberg, the heart and soul of JFAM. Well, I want to thank you all for coming tonight, for caring about this issue, and for making a difference. My mother, she had a saying she lived by, you are only as old as you feel. And she embodied this belief her entire life. This belief gave her a perennially youthful outlook on life, and I never thought of my mother as elderly. She lived until she was nearly 97. I think for those of us who care about preserving environmental integrity and upholding social justice, my mother's belief can easily be translated to, you are as powerful as you feel. It's easy to fall into the trap of feeling powerless these days. There have been a number of disappointments this year. The state legislature passed a bill that limits damages from nuisance lawsuits. They tried to dismantle the Des Moines Waterworks. They succeeded in defunding the Leopold Center for Agri Sustainable Agriculture. And they refused to address water quality in any meaningful way. Locally, our Board of Supervisors refused to consider a resolution in support of a factory farm moratorium, even though the Jefferson County community came out in force in support. In the face of all this disappointment, it's easy to feel powerless, right? Yeah. It's easy to say, I can't do anything. The corporate ag industry holds all the power in the state house, even here in Jefferson County, right? Yes. Yeah. No. I say, hogwash. <laughs> and let me tell you why. In Iowa, and across the state lines, local communities are standing up and taking their future in their own hands, just like John talked about a moment ago. These communities are powerful because they believe in themselves, and that's what we want to focus on here. First, let's take the moratorium resolutions. Last November, Webster County supervisors called for a moratorium on factory farms until the master matrix was fixed. This came after September's public launch of the Iowa Alliance for Responsible Agriculture with its call for a factory farm moratorium and JFAN's annual meeting that focused on the moratorium just right after that. More counties followed. Nine altogether from predominantly rural counties either passed resolutions or wrote similar letters. More counties jumped on board just focusing on the master matrix. Still more signed the Iowa CCI and Food and Water Watch petition to the DNR calling for a major master matrix fix. 17 counties so far saying loud and clear, Iowa, get your act together. Yeah. In fact, Howard County supervisors said they aren't even approving CAFO applications anymore. All applications are hereby failed. <laughs> Did those county supervisors throw up their hands and say, ah, can't do anything? No, they faced this problem, found their power, and began a journey by speaking out on behalf of their constituents. Now let me tell you about some communities also taking their futures in their own hands to break the grip of corporate ag. 
In Wayne County, Iowa Select, Iowa's largest hog corporation, proposed a 7,500 head sow operation. It's huge. The community was outraged. The, they formed a group and put nonstop pressure on Iowa Select and the DNR. Public meetings, calls, emails, letters to the editor. They tackled technical issues and pushed hard on every single one. The result? Iowa Select pulled out. Hmm. <laughs> Same thing happened in Clay County. That community organized, also fought powerful Iowa Select and won. Iowa Select again pulled out. Now last fall, up in Mason City, hundreds of community members organized and worked together to oppose a huge hog slaughterhouse proposed by Prestige. The city council considered tax breaks that this multi-billion dollar corporation said it just had to have. The community wanted no part of it. Through intensive, ongoing community organizing, showing up at city council meetings time and again, Mason City residents spoke strongly and convinced city officials to reject the tax breaks. Prestige left town. In September, just this past September, in the small town of Tonganoxie Tech, Kansas, a home to 5,200 residents, the meat giant Tyson said it was building a $320 million processing plant to package 1.25 million chickens each week. The deal was negotiated with local officials behind closed doors. When the community found out, the roof blew off. <laughs> Citizens Against Project Sunset organized, working with a coalition of local, state, and national organizations. At their first public meeting last month, thousands of people came in opposition. This is a town of 5,200 residents. Tyson didn't know it hit them. <laughs> the Leavenworth County Board of Commissioners, their supervisors, backed down and revoked its decision to issue $500 million in industrial revenue bonds for the Tyson facility. Tyson, Tyson is now looking for another location. This is what happens when people embrace their power. Howard County. Up in Howard County, two 2499 head CAFOs were proposed on fragile karst terrain. Karst is a particularly bad place for a factory farm because it poses a greater risk of groundwater contamination that provides the drinking water for these residents. This community is a farming community. They tried every possible angle to stop the CAFOs, but they went in. But did the community give up? Absolutely not. They put covenants on their land. Covenants that would prohibit CAFOs from ever being built on their property. Covenants that also prohibit liquid manure application. These provisions transfer to anyone who purchases the land in the future. Many of these properties are contiguous. 43 families, including 16 Amish families, signed these covenants. Over 5,000 acres are protected, and that's going to make it harder to build a CAFO, a future CAFO in that area. This local community took control of its future. And the thing is, this can be done here in Jefferson County, too. legislature almost dismantled the Des Moines Water Works, the utility that bravely stood up for clean water in our state. People came out of the woodworks in metropolitan Des Moines to vociferously oppose that bill, and they stopped it this year. Now, I'm going to come back to our factory farm resolution campaign here in Jefferson County. It's true we didn't get a resolution passed because of stonewalling by two supervisors. But let's talk about what did happen. Over 1,300 people signed petitions. Numerous letters to the editor appeared in the Fairfield Ledger. Dozens of people came out and spoke at numerous supervisor meetings or reached out to supervisors 
through emails, calls, or letters. Several articles appeared in the Fairfield Ledger covering this issue. We were in the news. We all worked together to say loudly and clearly, Jefferson County residents want a factory farm moratorium in Iowa. our stance on CAFOs in the public eye. In fact, everything we all do, from that campaign, to coming to annual meetings, to speaking out and fighting back when unwanted CAFOs come into neighborhoods, or educating friends and family and others that we know, it all has an impact on protecting Jefferson County. If you look at the number of hogs in Jefferson County, compared to our overrun neighbors in Washington and Keokuk counties, these counties who combined have a total of 1.3 million hogs and counting. It's very clear, together we are having an impact on protecting Jefferson County. This is how we and others around the state are working to take our community's future in our own hands. This is the power that we all have and that we need to use if we want to determine the future of our communities instead of having it dictated to us by industrial agriculture. We especially need to use it on the state level by demanding way better from our state legislators or voting in replacements that support regenerative agriculture instead of factory farms. <laughs> harbinger of the rising up that I see in the state. The Des Moines Register wrote a fabulous editorial on October 1st criticizing how the state handles pork production. They listed many important steps that the state could take to fix this broken agricultural system. And then they concluded with the following, quote, if they can't do these things, then perhaps lawmakers should do what county supervisor boards, rural residents, environmental groups, and others have asked. If lawmakers can't provide more local control, then they should pass a moratorium on new confinements. This editorial by Iowa's leading newspaper came about because people are exercising their power and standing up for what is just and right. And I say to you tonight, don't give in to the false thinking that you are powerless. You are not. Feel your power and be powerful. Keep fighting with JFAN to protect Jefferson County and the state. Let's work together to continuously stand for environmental and social justice. Let's work together to implement a factory farm moratorium now. We can all do this. Thank you.